Hey. Hi. 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 You're gonna be uh, super excited to bring everyone. This is our 20th episode of Yun Taku Live, and it's just oh, an amazing, uh, amazing ride. Oh my gosh! Right? Does it feel like 20 weeks to you? Yes and no. I, I, I <laughs> it's hard to say, right? Hard to say. Um, but yeah. Who knew that 2020 was gonna be like this? I keep saying that, I know, but like it's it really is um, such a journey, and we want to thank everyone for joining us. Uh, again, share this with your friends, like and subscribe to our YouTube page. I'm under. I've been reported to that we only need to have 121 more subscribers to go, and we can start um, doing donations and stuff like that on uh, and doing commercials and things like that on YouTube. So tell oh, your friends. Fun, yeah, just tell all your aunties and. 10 people tell their aunties all power 21. Yeah, 121. All right. So I just wanted to remind everyone that uh, this year, due to you know the coronavirus, we're so, we had to be creative and come up with this show called Yun Taku Live. Um, and that we're we're so happy that we're still able to keep everyone socially connected during this time, especially now when you know there's a lot of uncertainty. We're still under stay-at-home orders, but um I'm so grateful that we're able to share all these stories. So we do have a fun-filled episode for you today. So, so stay home, be safe, don't get sick, wear your masks. Which reminds me, here we go. Yeah, those are the ones you want. Those are cool. <laughs> this is my new HOA mask that I purchased online at the HOA store. Uh, if you go to the okinawanfestival.com website or uh, click on the top where it says shop, you can see our online marketplace. And I wanna give a big shout out to Courtney. Um, Courtney Takara, who is our HOA president from 2017. She did an amazing job putting this together. I know it's been a long-term goal of hers and so, um, and I just wanted to remind everyone, this is all volunteers. So we have people who are actually taking time off of work to go fulfill all these orders and do it in a you know socially distant, safe way. So there we go. So we have our masks. We have our Shisa distancing t-shirts. We have our bone dance towels, bone dance towels that you can get. Um, and one of the most popular items that we've had on here are the, our Monday Crafter masks. And uh, I just want to say thank you to our Monday Crafters. These are just a bunch of volunteers who are doing this. They're hand sewing all of these masks at home. Uh, and it's their way of giving back to our HOA. And so we wanted to thank all of them. And we also want everyone to understand that, please, you know, because they're hand, there's, it's literally a bunch of I don't want to say grandma and grandpas, <laughs> right? At home sewing masks. And so it's not like we have a sweatshop in the back end or mass producing these things. They are limited in numbers. They are very one of a kind, I should say. And um, yeah, they, they, so we have sold out of some of our more popular items and we're going to, we're going to work with our volunteers to see what we can do to maybe get some more, but uh, we, Appreciate everyone's patience and cooperation uh, as these are truly one of a kind masks made by our HOA Monday Crafter volunteers. So, ipe nihe debiru to all of them. I know it, it is close to collector type items. Right. I mean, it's it's kind of amazing to. Um, so, the marketplace just opened today. We want to thank everyone. You know, we just sent out our Purple Blast. Uh, today and a lot of people got online. Let me see, there were over 200 orders placed today. So you wanna get on there early, get your festival t-shirts. We also have our Ukaji Debiru design here to celebrate our 2020 year. And so we do do shipping anywhere in the US. Right now we are having to stick to domestic. Uh, if you are looking for something more international, you can please email us, but we're gonna have to do it on a case by case basis. So woohoo! Thank you to everyone. Yeah, I just want to add that we've had an amazing uh, response to the first day of the online marketing, and so you know many of our items are just literally flying off the shelves. Uh, yep. So I, you know, I want everyone to know uh, better go and and shop as, as soon as possible. Yeah. Yeah. I also wanted to do a real quick shout out to uh, Shark Dog Designs, Clint and Gordon yeah. Uehara over there. They're 
um, Clint has been helping us with these designs and he, he said he really appreciates the fact that HOA is supporting local businesses. You know, um, this is a really important way that we're able to, to you know, support our local businesses and also make sure that our t-shirts are done in a, in a really quick manner. And Gordon Uehara, for those of you who don't know, he's kind of the, the brainchild behind many of the designs that you see. So he designed both of the t-shirts this year and many of the past year's festival t-shirts too are Gordon's work. So thank you again, Gordon. He is the one that brings you the bright colors and all the, the that look and feel of Okinawan festival that many of you are familiar with. So to you, you too, Gordon. Thank you. And that's one interesting feature on the marketplace is you can actually yeah. find some older oh, festival yeah. shirts. So yeah, I mean, that's people right. are like, you know, I wish I saved my, you know, 2017 Whatever. shirt. <laughs> you know, and you can actually go back and, and, and get one now. Yeah. So we do have our old festival t-shirts on sale on uh, as well. So you got to, those are definitely like limited. Whatever we have is what we have. So um, you can go back and get there get their your shirts online now. So mm -hmm. thank you so much. This is an exciting big step for HOA. I know it's something that, um, yay, Courtney. <laughs> yeah, again, shout out to Courtney and, you know, uh, um, Renette and Stephanie and Kato all working hard to put these things uh, not only online, but in a box and get it to you folks right. really quick. So we do appreciate everyone's patience because we have such a huge spike in orders right now. Uh, please do allow some time for our orders. It's literally just a bunch of volunteers fulfilling our orders. We don't have Amazon Fulfillment Center yet, you know, so we do appreciate your patience and cooperation. Okay. So uh, so that's just one aspect of our virtual Okinawan Festival coming to you this week. I can't believe it's September already. Mm. It is crazy, but here we are, September 1st. And our website is, you know, going, we got a whole lineup. So if you click on lineup, you can see what to expect on our, during our live shows. Uh, we're actually kicking off though on Friday, September 4th uh, at 5, 5 p.m. Hawaii time for a webinar uh, on the 120th anniversary of Okinawan immigration. Now this is gonna be in partnership with the University of Hawaii Center for Okinawan Studies. And it is free to attend. Uh, the webinar is free. We are asking for donations and we humbly accept your donations. Uh, but you really got a RSVP soon because little did I know, I thought you know we had up to 500 seats for this webinar. Well, we've totally blown past that and we had to upgrade our account so that we can go up to a thousand seats now, but we're getting close, we're at like almost 700. So you wanna get, reserve your seat now. Uh, we're having professors from the University of Hawaii at Manoa, University of Hawaii Hilo. Uh, you can see our special special guest lecture. Uh, he's a professor in, uh, emeritus or former director, I should say, of the Center for Okinawa Migration Studies in at the University of Ryukyu's. We also have our commentators, our local uh, Wesley Uyunten. I know all his whole family will be watching in, but he's coming from San Francisco State University, as well as Takahiro Nakajima Sensei from University of Tokyo. So a lot of heavy hitters, a very prestigious lineup. And you can register online right there. You can see that. Um, so reserve your seat now because we may hit that thousand mark. And then I, I don't know if we have to upgrade again or we'll see, but you know, we, I um, reserve your space now. So that's just Friday. So that's Friday evening. Our live show will be starting from 2 p.m. on Saturday all the way till 5 p.m. And we can see here a great lineup of performances, uh, club features. So one of the things that I'm really looking forward to this year is our We Are HUOA club features, these little videos, vignettes that we put together. This is truly who is are who is the HOA and you can see all of our different members we ask them to answer some some questions about their activities their club history and all kinds of things and these are such heartwarming videos we also have a lot of videos about our um, our HOA programs history and we also have some special international guests that you're not going to want to miss so uh, you can see the lineup there but almost like don't want to give it all away, but it's right there on the website, right? We have uh, Jake Shimabukuro. Who else, John? We have... Well, well from from Okinawa, we have a whole bunch, but yeah. yeah, definitely Jake Shimabukuro from here. And then from Okinawa, we have our friends. You know, these are guys yeah. that have come and 
uh, visited our Okinawa festivals throughout the year. So Daichi Hirata, Mamoru Miyagi, mm -hmm. uh, Begin, even. Uh, I know they're not. Uh, that's like a uh, Udui Haru, Rekios, a uh, very exciting uh, ASA group. So great lineup of Okinawan talent as well. Yep. Uh, but not to dismiss too, we are, our, our local Okinawan performing arts groups are also going to be with some of our main features that you would normally expect on the stage. So you can still make sure you see grandma on video. You know, everyone comes to, comes to watch grandma or their kids on stage. And so you're definitely going to see that as well. So that's Saturday and Sunday. Uh, the live show goes from 2 to 5 p.m. But uh, especially on Saturday, we are doing a virtual bone dance on Saturday night starting at 7 p.m. So get out your, you know, happy coat. Make sure you get and just the sound of bone dance music, I think, will take everyone back and wish we were out in the hot, you know, parking lots or whatever bone dance you usually go to. But we're um, we're holding it virtually this year. So make and sure we are in the middle of Obon in Okinawa. Yes. This is uh, the second day, the Nakanui. Mm -hmm. And um, so while uh, many of our Hawaii temples didn't get a chance to celebrate Obon, yep. uh, at least Obon Odori, well, you get to celebrate with us. And like mm -hmm. uh, Lynn said, get your towels out, get out of your chair, and we'll have four of our very popular uh, groups performing for our Obon dance uh, festival later in Saturday. Yep. So as John mentioned, uh, Okinawa Obon is a little bit different and we're going to have a video actually later on so we can talk about it. But um, there's three days and the first day where you welcome the ancestors, we're in the middle day and then the last day where you send your ancestors off. Um, so I want to make sure that we we also um, make, you know, we'll have a little bit of history about that, which I'm really excited for actually. Okay. I just wanted to mention, you know, because um, it's uh, very important, of course, to uh, all of Japan, Okinawa, and they had their hurricane or their typhoon blow through. Yeah. So they weren't able to celebrate in the way that they normally do, right? Because yep. uh, I, I know we'll talk about this, but in the first day where you have the lanterns out in the yeah. street to help guide your ancestors to your homes, they, yeah. they couldn't do that. So I think watching... And joining us on the virtual Okinawa festival will actually be a really good experience for them. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. again, but they were still, I think almost everyone I talked to in Okinawa, they're still making their unke yeah. juchi and yeah. their nakami jiru. So they they were still getting ready, but just having to stay indoors. Yeah, a lot of people had to do it via, you know, they, they lost electricity. So this typhoon that just came by, uh, it... it it was a big one. And, you know, Okinawa is used to typhoons, but it, it still caused a lot of damage. So our hearts are out to the people of Okinawa right now. I know they're they're kind of in recovery mode right now. But talk about a triple threat. So COVID, mm -hmm. um, typhoon, and then on Obon. So it's yeah, just, exactly. it's, it's you know, they're like, wow, 2020, who knew? But, you know, I asked a friend, and they're like, I think our ancestors will understand that this year was tough. <laughs> Yeah. So they won't be too mad. Yeah. Okay. So let's see. Um, as always, we always wanted to remind everyone that due to you know COVID nineteen, there's a lot of things that are uncertain for this year. So we do deeply appreciate for those of you who are able, if you can donate to the Hawaii United Okinawa Association. It helps us present programs like this. You know, helps us buy cameras. I don't know if you guys can notice, but I have a new camera. <laughs> 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 um, I, don't I don't know, know if you could notice, camera. but I have the old camera that wasn't working. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So um, we are upgrading our equipment so that we can bring you programs like this. But again, um, we're super excited to have this. And uh, thank you. This is where we're showing you. It's easy to donate. Um, you can use your credit card. Uh, if you do have a PayPal account, that's that makes it even easier. But we just want to make sure that everyone um, knows that we are accepting always donations and we thank you from the bottom of our hearts yes and i, I again i want to tell all the people that have meeting and people have been yes. donating specifically for yuntaku live yep. uh but to everyone that's really supporting hua during these hard times uh the center is closed until september 30th and who mm -hmm. knows how much longer uh Hopefully but not. again you know uh we can't do it without your help and support. So again, mahalo and ipinihe debiru for your support. 
<laughs> um, also wanted to say, you know, we've had a lot of support from from our restaurants and our, mm. our community this year. And um, Aloha Awamori has been put on a pre-sale account and it's just been amazing. The type of, um, let me see, sorry, I just got an update from Randy Kuba about what kind of, so on the uh, alohaawamori.com, they're doing a pre-sale order on there. However, however, what's already sold out is the andagi, the wow. imocho andagi. Oh, the chocolate. And I know, the festival essential kit, the manasu longevity kit, and another zawa omori kit. So anyway, what's available still, <laughs> what's available is the soki soba, they have lot. They just kind of got more orders because they were anticipating more orders, right? So more uh, ingredients: soki soba and taco rice. So make sure you guys go order your soki soba taco rice. Um, those are two classic Okinawan dishes that you can order. So the pickup times are from nine to two, so you can go and then go home and watch your virtual Okinawan festival. And this pickup oh. is at the Pagoda Hotel. Oh yes. And so right, thank you. Uh, head head on over to the Pagoda Hotel, very convenient location for those of you in and around town. But that just shows you, you know, with uh, even our drive through Andagi uh, about a month or so ago, and then with the marketplace, and now with uh, alohaawamori.com. Boy, if you don't get online quick and, and order immediately. Yeah. Man. Now. So I also, I just, I, I'm, so if you need more andagi, there's other places who are also selling andagi now, but you got to call ahead and pre-order. So Teruya's andagi has also, you know, they've been providing fresh andagi for a lot of different events for a long time. So please call ahead, uh, look them up. I believe their their phone number is 389-1714. So they're selling andagi this week in honor of our virtual Okinawan festival. And also Utage is now taking pre-orders for, for andagi. So call them to, so I don't have the number on there, but... Utage and Kalihi. Yeah, Utage and Kalihi. Uh, a lot of places, you know, a lot of people go there already to get really good uh, lunch and dinner. But man, they're also doing an Andagi pre sale now. So we have a lot of support from our community. So thank you again to Teruya's and Utage. Uh, and if you haven't placed your order for Andagi anywhere, make sure you call those places ahead of time. I know Sunrise also is doing a pre order mm -hmm. for Soki Soba. Um, and some other dishes. I tried to call them before the show to see if, uh, you know, ask how sales were going, but the um, the phone was busy wow. the times I called. So I have a feeling <laughs> that they might be sold out too. But anyway, wow. if you can, uh, you know, Sunrise Restaurant also has some specials that they're holding for the Okinawan Festival. So we really appreciate all of our community support to um, our our restaurants and our Okinawan owned businesses. We do have a list now that we are uh, continually building. If you go on okinawanfestival.com and click eat, it will uh, take you to a list of restaurants and Okinawan owned other food businesses that will help uh, that you can support, not just this week, but you know, throughout every every time you go shopping, you can know what, what um, what Okina, what brands or what restaurants or what places to go and what things to eat, like our Aloha Tofu, Sun Noodle, Okuhara Foods, you know? And so just so you know that everything is, um, these are the businesses you can support in solidarity with your Okinawan community. So Rainbow Drive-In, that has been huge support. Oh, yes. yes. And, you know, along with the food theme, uh, I, I I hope uh, we can pull that up too. It, it's in the purple blast that went out, but mm -hmm. the food, uh, if you go to Foodland yes. for this month only, please uh, note that you want to support the Hawaii United Okinawa Association. Yes. So many nonprofits are doing this this month. Uh, it's Foodland's annual Give Aloha campaign, mm -hmm. where they have you know you can sign up as a nonprofit. So when you go shopping. Make sure you tell everyone uh, or tell the cashier you want HOA. There's a there's a number as well, but I think it's easier to just remember Hawaii United Okinawa Association when you're at checkout at Foodland. So again, yeah. thank you so much for any any little bit that you can do. Oh, so many things <laughs> happening. <Yes. laughs> okay, um, you know we had talked about Obon earlier, and so we want we have a special video that we wanted to play for you today, and I wanted to thank the young Okinawans of Hawaii for putting this together. And it was really important for us to, to recognize that we are doing this show during Obon. And so we wanted to make uh, share with you uh, a little, 
a little um, taste of what obon is about, or Okinawa obon in particular. So. Gusuyo chu ganabira. One ne Colin Yaibin. One ne Brandon Yaibin. Chu ya Hawaii wute nada naka no hi Yaibin shiga. Uchi nanje na ukui ru na toibi kutu. Namakara ifiwa ukui no kutu unuki abira. Today is the second day of Uchina Obong in Hawaii, but in Okinawa, it's already the third and final day. So we're going to talk a little bit more about Ukui. So in Hawaii, when we talk about obon, for a lot of people, one of the first things that comes to mind is bon dances. And typically, of course, that would have happened throughout the whole summer. So we kind of get this uh, long season of obon. Now, actually, obon is only a three-day period. And in Okinawa, it's observed according to the lunar calendar. So it falls on the 13th, 14th, and 15th days of the lunar calendar in the seventh month. And what that means for us, who use the Gregorian calendar, this year it happens on August 31st, September 1st, which is today, and September 2nd. Um, and one of the words that you hear a lot when you talk about Obon in Okinawa is Shichiguachi. And Shichiguachi literally means the seventh month in the Okinawan language. But in the context of obon, a lot of the times that word shichibachi is used synonymously with obon. Brennan and I um, had the opportunity to actually live in Okinawa, spend time there. And one thing we notice about Okinawa obon is it's really centered around the Uyafa Fuji, or the ancestors. And it's a time for people who live outside of Okinawa to come back home and spend time with family. Uh, people say it's the the most significant holiday of the year and equate it to Christmas in the U.S. Whereas in Japan, Japanese obong is heavily influenced by Buddhism. And a lot of people take it as a three-day uh, vacation, time to travel um, and actually leave home. So for our club, the Young Okinawans of Hawaii, um, one thing that we're known for is going out to the bone dances um, and doing our our drumming and dancing and so this this is based on the okinawan tradition of yesa uh, but what happens here in hawaii is that uh, that tradition has been adapted to the local bone dance style which is of course um, dancing in a circle around a tower that houses the musicians now in okinawa during obon you see what's called what's known as michijune yesa and um, so the big difference over there is that they, they do it on the streets, they, and they do it in straight lines. Um, so during Obon, during Shichiguachi, uh, oftentimes uh, streets will get closed down and the youth groups from each village will do their yesa, the drumming and the dancing um, through the streets, uh, passing by houses, um, people will come out you know, to kind of watch. And um, the idea is basically to to give the ancestors a good send off um, as they make their way back. So we're actually gonna show you a video clip tonight. And this comes from the area of Heshkia, which is more in the, the central part of Okinawa. And a lot of people look to, to this style of Yesa as um, one of the older and possibly one of the oldest forms of Yesa. Um, so let's take a look. Yeah. 
All right. So one thing to note is that although Yesa has become such a strong part of our Okinawan identity, uh, traditionally Yesa was only done in certain parts of Okinawa. And so again, our club is known for being at the bon dances, dancing and drumming in the circle. Um, but there was a period of time, maybe about five years ago, when the club did carry out Michijune a couple of years in a row. So we're going to leave you with a clip of that. Uh, thank you for having us tonight, letting us share our time here on Yuntaku. And don't forget, uh, our ancestors are visiting right now, and tomorrow they're going to be going back. So be sure to, to send them off. Probably. That's right. Thank you, folks. And for more information, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, at Young Okinawans of Hawaii. You hear David? Was great. I you know, yeah, well, and, what an <laughs> yeah. and what an opportunity to see uh, or have people watch Hishikiya. You know, that is one of the uh, mm -hmm. oldest groups in Okinawa. So yes yes and just the sound of it I think uh, brings back a lot of memories and like the so one of my favorite memories of living in Okinawa is uh, during Obon and it's like for three nights straight you can hear the music and the drums in the street and you can hear them getting closer and then everyone comes out in the community and everyone's standing on the street um and for one season for one uh, obon season i did join um one of the um senenkai the the young people's um group in the neighborhood and i did like one night of shimedaiko during Michijune, and I could, I was so tired after one night. I could not believe this. They do it straight from 6 p.m. to like midnight, you know, and um, my hands were all blistered, I was sweating like crazy. It was super hot, and that was just night one. So I couldn't, you know, it's just something that's very unique to Okinawa. Um, you know, the way we celebrate Obon here in Hawaii is also very unique to Hawaii. Um, somebody from Japan told me it was like being taken back in time, you know, when they when they saw the, the you know, over here we do it in a circle. I, I don't know if Honolulu police or the police would like us going down the street from 6 p.m. to midnight <laughs> in the neighborhood. Yeah, but, you know, the, yeah. the circle thing comes from the Japanese custom, but mm -hmm. young Okinawans, they, they actually, did it. They, it, in right near Jikoen, they, yeah. they have done the march through that uh, neighborhood behind Jikoen. So uh, look for that, you know, uh, well, not this year, but, yeah. uh, you know, look for that uh, in, in the next years to come. They usually uh, try to ha include that in their Obon celebration. Yeah, it is something special to kind of do it in the street, like a parade. Everyone loves a parade, right? But like the community, everyone, all their neighbors come out to see it. Um, and it really does feel like your ancestors are here to visit. And so you, you're treating them to... Oh, that brings back such great memories. Okay, well, thank you so much to Brandon Ng and Colin Hu for sharing that, um, you know, history of Obon and some of the differences between Japanese Obon and Okinawan Obon and then our Obon celebrations here in Hawaii. So thank you so much. Oh, okay. We have a lot to share. I also, you know, um, I'm just getting updates on a lot of the food things. And as a lot of people are, you know, staying home uh, right now and everyone's cooking a lot at home and so our friends at Sun Noodle also wanted to share this video that they made because they knew a lot of people would be having to stay at home you know watch our virtual festival from home we are we definitely want people to don't go out and take out food but for those of you who are staying at home I want to make your own Okinawa soba at home or maybe you're watching on the mainland because you can buy these noodles on the mainland too you can make your own soki soba at home so we do have a video real quick just wanted to show you this, uh, and we'll, this is up on our okinawanfestival.com website too, but how to make your own soki soba tutorial. Thank you. 
Where's she? So I know I, I saw a lot of people. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> Almost so? all of the restaurants that uh, are Okinawan or restaurants that do, you know, serve either Okinawa soba or yakisoba, a lot of them use the same noodles, if you notice, or here in Hawaii. But uh, especially for our friends on the mainland who are joining us, mm. uh, maybe you don't have all the restaurant choices that we have here. But I bet you somewhere, and if you can't find uh, Asian market food or anything that does sell that Okinawa soba, I I'm pretty sure, don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure Sun Noodle also sells, uh, they've been selling a lot of stuff to people on the mainland, ramen kits, um, Simon kits, you know, they're bringing Simon to the mainland. So mm. here we go. <laughs> oh, that looks so good. I know what I'm going to eat when I... I know, right? Didn't it make you hungry? <laughs> Oh gosh. Okay, so now after all of those, you know, we had a lot of uh, updates and things to celebrate today. We do have our special guests um, and we want to introduce and bring them on. They've been waiting, Shelby, Kaeo, Chantel, and Travis. And as from the Urizun Minyo Kyokai, but as we endearingly call them, the Urizun Kids. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Let's see. You guys Let's ready? Bring them on. Let's bring Let's them on. Bring you know, them on. Hey. They've been waiting. Hey, to go. Hi guys. Uri Zun. Hey. Uri Zun hey. and correct me if I'm wrong, but Uri Zun means like a summer wind. And you know, um, so it's great that you guys are coming on this show right summer at the end wind. of summer. And you know, you guys are really special to me, not only because uh, Kayo, your your their dad, their Ichiro Sensei, was mm -hmm. my son Sensei and good friend for many years. But the fact that you folks are carrying on Urizun, I'm just really so touched and so happy that uh, you guys are. And great to have you guys on tonight. Yeah, thank you for having us, John. It's really an honor for us to be part of yeah, Taku you, Live. And we're going to have some videos and stuff to show you guys. So come and join us down memory lane. Yeah, <laughs> and it's great. Oh, you guys so, still are kids, don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, you guys can't get old because that means I'm old. <laughs> okay, so let's just kind of go quickly. Maybe, uh, if you can do each do a quick introduction your name, give us a little bit of how long you've been playing Okinawan music, and um, maybe just a little bit. And once we do that, we'll kind of go through the history of how you guys all met, which was funny to hear you guys trying to figure out too. So let's start with Kaeo. Yeah, so uh, I'm Kaeo Shiroma. Uh, my dad, my father uh, was Derek Ichiro Shiroma Sensei. Mm -hmm. And he, my father had played Sanshin for over 40 years. Mm. So the Sanshin was pretty relevant in my life. I was always around it. Mm -hmm. So, and then I've been playing Okinawan music for about 13 years or so. That's which includes awesome. Sanshin and guitar and ukulele. I'm going to go, I don't know how it looks on your screen, but I'm going to go down. Travis. <laughs> Hi, I'm Travis Oshiro. Um, I've been playing for about, I would say, 15, 12 to 13 years, 15 years, give or take, as of right now. And so I think I started because the family brought me in to get started at first. Mm -hmm. um, them being associated with um, all of us or are we're considered like brothers and sisters now. And that's kind of how we got started and pretty much stayed together. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. We'll get all into the family there. We'll, we'll move mm -hmm. on to Shelby. <laughs> Hi, Taegu uh, My hey. name is Shelby Oshiro. Um, I've been playing Okinawa music since I was like in middle school, about seventh grade. Mm -hmm. Not sure how many years that's been, but like I've also, <laughs> Um, have always been around Okinawa music since a little girl and whatnot. <laughs> and Chantel. Hi, I'm Chantel Ikehara. Um, I've been uh, involved in Okinawa music since like 2008. So I was like 12 years ago. <laughs> but my grandma That's actually, um, is that, I know. <laughs> hmm. But my grandma <laughs> actually got me into, you know, the Okinawa music and culture. And she's actually the president um, of Okinawa and Chosha Club at Lana Kila Senior Center. So she actually um, introduced me to, um, you know, Okinawan music and the group actually, because um, Ichiro Sensei and Kaeo them performed at Lana Kila. So she introduced me to um, the group. Okay. So now I, I think uh, you alluded to a little, a little bit there, but uh, tell us how, you know, um, you guys 
first met each other, I guess, back in the day. This is the Udizun. <laughs> yeah, that's from a while ago. That's when we were a little bit younger. But so <laughs> how we all met was that we all went to Roosevelt High School. So I'm the class of 2011. And Chantel's <laughs> a year younger. And Travis is a year younger than her. So we all kind of grew up uh, in high school together, which was really nice because not a lot of people really played or had heard of Okinawa music at, mm -hmm. in high school or weren't aware of it. So to have that kind of connection between the four of us was something that was really special and something that uh, Ichiro Sensei uh, noticed also. Yes, I guess proximity makes... Oh, look at what year <laughs> yeah, is this? Younger. <laughs> I would think that's around oh, no. 2011, I would think. So um, right out, almost out of high school. We were definitely high schoolers then. Yeah, definitely high school. <laughs> so we've been doing this for a little while. <laughs> this is great. Funny because you can see like the changes in our happy coats over the <laughs> yeah. years. And then the haircuts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll have to go through different colors of hair too. So. Yeah, different color hair. <laughs> yeah. This is so good. Okay. Let's see. What else do we have? We have our... Oh, yes. This is how uh, many of us have seen you guys um, on stage performing uh, together. I'm trying to think, where was this one? You folks are so popular and still popular with all the Shininkais, especially mm -hmm. at the beginning of the year. Yeah, th those were a lot of foundation years uh, doing lots of Shininkais with uh, Ichiro Sensei mm -hmm. for the various different clubs that would want us to perform. And that's how we kind of got uh, a little bit more tight as a family and tight as a group musically. So I mm -hmm. think though though the Shining Kai's were a really of a proving ground of us performing in front of an audience. So I was very grateful for Ichiro Sensei to give us the opportunities to do that, to yeah. perform in front of audiences for Okinawa music, which is very rare to see. Yeah. And this picture that is shown right now. So Ichiro Sensei had a recital called Uta Kukuru, I think. Uta Kukuru. Yeah, it's Uta Kukuru. So this uh, picture that he's holding right now is uh, everyone who participated in that uh, signed on the side, as you can see. So all of our signatures, even from Wakagawa Sensei, uh, Ichiro wow. Sensei Sensei, yeah, signed that also. And that was in 2012. Yeah, well, for everyone else, Wakugawa Sensei is the uh, Minyo uh, Kyokai Sensei in Chatan, Okinawa. Mm. This brings back a lot of memories. Oh, yes. and this one is our our Udizun shirts, our green shirts, which is a a really special thing to me mm -hmm. because um, those shirts that are made were actually handmade by uh, mm. my grandmother wow. uh, Shizuko Shiroma. Mm. So all the the green and white shirts that you see are, are handmade and made with love. So that's one one thing that I really appreciate about that on all these times that we've had see and that's another picture of us nice <laughs> right there with Ichiro Sensei yeah oh Ma all matching so it, it was really nice for us to have that uniform and we're all matching so it, it really brought us closer together as a group and a family well I know like John said this is you know you guys are one of the more uh, popular groups I think um, we're, we're so fortunate in Hawaii to have multiple groups that can help us perform at all the different Shina Enkai. And I know um, because you guys are like young, you know, and you bring a lot of different energy to the group, I, I, I know that um, so, so many of us who have seen you perform on stage, but rarely do we get the chance to hear your stories, you know, um, <laughs> and hear what you do, you know, uh, as um, what's funny, because like, I always, you know, I know Kaeo, at uh, as Udizun Minyo group, but many times, how many times, Kyle, have we been backstage <laughs> together at work? <laughs> yes, <laughs> it is a very, very uh, integral part of oh, a lot just... of the shows that you all see on Yuntaku Live and a lot of productions. So she's very hands on and she's very, very good at it. So, Lynn, <laughs> thank you. No, I remember I told you, you're backstage, you control everything. I just sit here in front and, <laughs> and um, I'm no good behind the camera, only in front of it. So, Oh, wow, these are great photos. Yeah, that, and this picture is actually a picture of me, Travis, and Shelby from that recital mm -hmm. uh, Ukuru, where we performed a couple songs, just us three. 
Oh, yeah. man, we were like 16 years old or 15 years old. Oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> <laughs> photo only, <laughs> only, a couple years ago. only a couple of years ago <laughs> a couple of years, yeah. <laughs> oh man well without further ado i think we all want to hear we've seen the photos of you guys um playing and uh, many of us you know we're looking forward to your performance so why don't you let us know what your first song will, is gonna be yeah, right, so, so, uh, Shelby, go ahead. yeah we're gonna throw it way back kind of we want to like showcase some um, um videos that I think that really represents the kind of things that we were doing as a group, at least a Minyo group. And so this one was actually taken at Jiko Wen. And the reason why we want to actually open up, open up with this is that like, you know, Jiko Wen has been so like supportive and they just, mm -hmm. you know, they've always supported the Uzi and Minyo group and, you know, everything that they did for us, like with the bone dances and hosting us and like having us hold our concerts and fundraisers there was just so like, um, great. Uh, we're so grateful for that. Mm -hmm. And um, so this video that we're going to show next was actually a fundraiser that we had tried to do at Jikoen a couple years ago. Um, it was called Yui Maru. Mm -hmm. And one thing that really made this kind of special was that like there was many uh, collaboration amongst the different um, organizations here in Hawaii. So you're going to see like, you know, Hawaii Okinawa Creative Arts, you're going to see Chinago Asa. And I think that, you know, everyone really joined in because they all agreed that like any way that we could get back to Jikoen was worth it because they always, always give to the Okinawa community. Yes, so they are the original Okinawa center, really. I mean, in terms of history, uh, it was the, the gathering place for our Okinawan community for many, many years. Um, and uh, before we were able to build our own center out here in Waipio, but a lot of, lot of wonderful history of our Okinawan community at Jikoen. Absolutely. Yeah. And many of us are actually Jiko M members as well. That's right. <laughs> yes. Gotta support. Gotta yes. support. Right? Thank you, Reverend Nishiyama. Yes. For everything over <laughs> over the years. Very uh very important person to uh, us personally. As well as so, President Doris O'Shiro. Yes, and yep. Doris O'Shiro. <laughs> D Doris. Okay. So we're excited to see this. I um Dynamic so, Duke. Dynamic Duke. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we'll bring that video on. Oh, <laughs> 
Brings back. There's something about that song, right? Just jumping up, I'm bouncing up and down in my chair. Oh. That was that was the program that you put together yourself yeah. on for the purpose of helping G Cohen, wasn't it? Right. So like Chantel, Travis, and I, and like some other people in our group, were like we try to, for, yeah, coordinate something to get back to G Cohen, and it was it was a real good learning opportunity on you know what people do just to pull the event off. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm 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 very grateful that you know I think it's coming up with ideas like that and moving forward and, and doing them that that makes our community so great because we have a lot of people who who want to do you know they want to help and they want to find different ways that they can help so very good very good so yeah uh, let's see so let me let me talk uh, Travis too is a, yeah thank like you know you guys are such a treasure and so I think. Um, you know, you guys may not feel super young, but yes, you are very young. <laughs> <in terms> of, <laughs> um, the, um, you know, our, our community. And so we just wanted to make sure that we, we thank all of you guys for, for, for doing that. So, um, yeah, tell us a little bit more about, uh, Travis, that was you, right? You had the dynamic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was definitely, if you guys didn't already know this, that was the first time I had to rap in a song. And so, that definitely was an eye-opening experience, but not one that I wouldn't take for granted. But it was definitely a fun performance, definitely one of the most memorable experiences experiences I've had with our group. And so it was awesome, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, no, that is awesome. So thank you so much, you guys, for sharing with uh, Dynamic DQ with us. Um, it's it's really interesting. So we're gonna get a little bit into. Um, we're gonna do a real quick in-depth interview with Shelby, if that's okay, because we want to get to know each one of you real quick. So Shelby, real quick, tell us uh, what do you do for a living, a little bit about yourself, and when was the first time you were in Okinawa? I'd love to hear. Okay, so um, I'm actually a teacher at YNI Intermediate. I teach mm -hmm. U.S. history, and thank you for reminding me that I'm young, because every day, you know, I'm pretty sure they tell me I'm old. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I'm sure you don't feel it right now, especially this year for teachers. Anybody who's a teacher this year, hats off to you. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I thought that like the more years I teach, you know, it would be easier, but no, this has been my most challenging year so far. <laughs> but um, I started uh, kind of getting into the Okinawa music, um, even when I was younger, because my parents were like really, you know, active within the Okinawan mm -hmm. community. And actually they even met at Bond Dance practice and they actually got married at Jikoen. So <laughs> um, <laughs> there was no escaping um, Okinawan <laughs> like, um, events and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And um, I first learned Sanchin from Norman Kanishiro Sensei. And then mm -hmm. I had um, started learning from Ichiro Sensei when I was like, you know, joining with all my cousins. Like there's mm -hmm. Travis, David, Chris, Daniel, like all our Oshiro cousins were learning from Ichiro Sensei. And then, you know, I found out that my Roosevelt high school classmates were there. So it seemed like, okay, here we go. <laughs> yep. So like you mentioned, um, Travis is your cousin, right? Travis, so you guys are first cousins, so this is like Okinawa genealogy tree going <laughs> this big, right? <laughs> like everyone's cousins. <laughs> right, I believe we're second cousins, but still close at heart. And so yep. definitely family brought us together and just kind of at first, just to see how well, I guess, we'd be interested in Okinawa music and then how our family kind of just got so into it and then mm -hmm. just being able to, you know, continue and definitely having a lot of fun. And so that's definitely what led me to continue and stay definitely. Yeah. I know it, it, it's, it's nice to see, um, you know, family is such a huge part of our community, right? Um, and it's funny, sometimes I don't know whether people are actually related because just because your last name is Oshiro doesn't necessarily mean you're <laughs> right. cousins, right? So <laughs> I don't want to assume, right. but this time I, it, you guys actually are her cousins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and Shelby, you also have a long history with hula. So often you meld the two, right. which is amazing. You know, you, you people get to see that fusion of Hawaiian and Okinawan performance. Yeah, actually, I've been really fortunate when joining the Uriza Minyo group that, mm -hmm. you know, Oshiro Sensei, really gave me the opportunity to bring in something that I loved um, mm. the group. And even when I first started learning from him and I had to go dance at Waikiki for my Kumu, actually he would show up and watch me perform and he was very supportive. You know, he was he was there and like oh. that showed me like how much that I could um, really learn from him. And also like that it's not just, I'm here to learn Sanchin. Like he is, he has become someone in my family that I look to. Mm -hmm. so, that was really special. Oh, that is that. Is, yeah, it's supporting you as a person, right? Like as a as a whole person. Oh, I miss him. Anyway, yeah. So let's talk. Uh, so we talked. Uh, Travis. Sorry, Shelby. Travis. So uh, yeah. tell us a little bit about yourself and what inspired. Well, we already you know talked about your family and stuff, but uh, maybe some of the clubs that you were in. Well, since you were younger, he's the youngest one in the group, though. <laughs> <laughs> so I am the youngest. At least now, yeah. Yeah, um, not, but definitely not. in I'm a part of the Tamaguchi Club, and so you know, every uh, Shinen Kai or so, we'd always go, and then our family would, you know, I'd see Shelby there, and then her parents, and then we'd always be there. And only after really we started playing and practicing that mm -hmm. we actually started performing at a lot of Shinen Kai's. And so even more so to bring on the fact that, you know, we stay together just because we're all got close together. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's just how we began and how we're still together. Tell us a little bit about this photo here. So Looks that serious. photo is <laughs> when, oh, well, it definitely was serious. So um, I believe this is uh, one of my second 
test in Okinawa to get um, the Yushu for show? playing Sanshin. I believe it, yeah, yeah Yushu, Yushu show. show. And then Yushu show. Right. And so in front of me, you only see, I think, about three judges, but definitely there's about 12, I want to <laughs> say, judges or so. Yeah. And so I'm definitely feeling the um, the embarrassment, not embarrassment, but <laughs> pressure. Very pressure. Pressure. Yeah. And so it's very nerve wracking, but performed, did the Yushu show, and I got it. And so, yeah. I think it's really important that a lot of our um, our young people are able to kind of aspire to these tests. I know they're nerve wracking and they kind of cause a lot of stress for people, but it is um, kind of a badge of honor. And it's something I'm, I'm so glad that we continue to have people who try and try for these tests because it really gives our community something to aim for. And then it, it kind of sets the bar too, right? It sets the bar yeah. for, um, and that's why we are so lucky to have so many talented musicians because we, we, um, you know, support our students going over to take these tests. But man, that looks stressful. I'm just like, I'm looking at it. I'm feeling stressed out for you. I mean, it's it's a testament of your commitment, you know, to mm -hmm. your, not only the performance, but your cultural heritage. And so, um, you know, it was, I mean, I know you're going to Okinawa to really focus on on whether Shinjin show or Yushu show, but mm -hmm. uh, what, what did your takeaway from being in Okinawa? I mean, what was your maybe it was a real experience? I mean, mm -hmm. going back to, you know, per se to going back to our roots. And then I also have one half of my family there, my mother's side, and being able to really experience the Ushinanshu culture really opened up my eyes to you know, a lot of things that I never experienced. And, you know, it felt like when I left Okinawa, I kind of, one half of me is just kind of stay there too. And mm -hmm. so definitely the experience in Okinawa was surreal. And even at that time when we took our Yushu show and then first Chantel to her Shinjin show, uh, we actually went up there also to perform with Udu Haru. And so mm -hmm. even more so, it was a lot, but it definitely was a great experience. So, yeah. You know, and um, as you know, Udui Haru is one of our special guests for the uh, Virtual Okinawa Festival. Mm -hmm. And it is because of that special relationship with Ichiro Sensei and, you know, and Udui Haru. So uh, it's it's so nice to hear you talk about that relationship. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, you guys. Um, really special to kind of hear uh, a little bit more about you, you know, um, since we do get to see you on stage, but we don't normally get to ask you questions. So, so thank you. Thank you. So I wanted to bring on Kaeo, Kaeo, if you want to come back on, because we want to introduce our next song. Yeah, our next yeah. song being Haisai Oji-san. Yeah, so this song, Haisai Oji-san, uh, is a really uh, fun song that uh, Travis is actually singing. So... And this is a video that we had done at one of the many Shinin uh that we would perform at throughout the years. Mm -hmm. And in this video actually has uh, Scotty Moriyama. So his father, uh, Shoi uh, Moriyama, actually sang this song on the 1998 version of Jibario. So it's actually really cool that uh, the son of him and also me and Ichiro Sensei are performing as well and Travis is uh, singing. So that's really, really a fun, fun song, and it's up tempo, and a lot of people love it, even when Travis mm. is singing, which is really good. Wow, the epic. Okay, so hi Sayoji san. I'm <laughs> 
That's a great song. It's, uh, I think the, the person taking the video wanted to dance. Like, oh, <laughs> no, yeah, we're... you could tell they're kind of doing this. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> oh, that's funny. But I think um, that's a that's a very familiar scene for many of us who attend mm -hmm. a lot of the Shinenkais, right? Uh, Masa's Cafeteria stage. That was um, such a great, great. Thank you, uh, guys, for Hi Sayoji san. Okay, next we're going to bring up Chantel. Ikehara, she is the the voice, I would say, that many of us know from our Buddhism um, Minyugos. She has a beautiful voice. So we're going to bring up Chantel. And I know she's ready. She ready? Hey, Hi, Chantel. Hey, how are Hello. you doing? Oh, I'm good. Okay, the songbird. Here we go. Yeah, so uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, Chantel, and where uh, maybe when you started singing too and um, your history. Yeah, so let's. I guess go back to when I was born. <laughs> so <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But yeah. um, so I did actually start singing when I was um around like three years old. So my style back then was more of like the pop ballad. So like Whitney Houston, Mariah Carey, yeah. all those influences. Yeah. <laughs> At three then, years um, old. <laughs> yeah, I started listening to Celine Dion. Wow, <laughs> really that's young. Great. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so I guess I um, always had a passion for singing. And it was actually in middle school where, you know, my grandma introduced me to, um, you know, my great grandpa. Um, he was Seiko Ikehara. So he was a Master Sanching player. And he was one of the early instructors in Hawaii. Actually, we just found a picture of him. But oh. um, you can see. Oh, yes, wow. he's right there. Yeah. So I guess you can say like music kind of ran in the family. So, you know, in middle school, yeah. So my grandma, she um, encouraged me to learn about the Okinawan culture through music. So mm -hmm. she played Nara So So, um, you know, the version by Rimi Natsukawa. Mm -hmm. So she played that on her cassette tape. And yes. she was like, oh, you know, you're on <laughs> the cassette tape. But yeah, she, she said, oh, you know, I think your voice would match this song. 
And so she, you know, taught me the story behind the song and helped me with pronunciation. So that was actually the first Okinawan song I've ever learned. Mm. And then um, in 2009, I started developing more of an interest for Okinawan music as well as Japanese music. So mm. I entered the Keizu karaoke um, competition. And so I was super nervous, you know, I was first timer entering this big competition. Um, so, <laughs> but I actually was fortunate enough to win. Um, and I was the youngest to ever win during that time. And the grand prize was actually a trip to Japan and I'd never been before. And um, I knew I really also wanted to go to Okinawa. And, mm -hmm. you know, I was very fortunate enough to have the opportunity through um, a live Yui Maru benefit concert. Mm -hmm. And that was actually organized by some of the most amazing um, people in the Okinawan community, like Shari Tomashiro and Karen Kubahori. So, so many people helped organize that concert for me to raise funds um, to make my first trip to Okinawa to learn more about my culture, you know, my where I came from, my family roots. So I was very yeah. fortunate enough for that concert for me to go to Okinawa. And it was during that time also um, Ichiro Sensei um, he wrote a song, you know, Uchi, Uchi no mm -hmm. Kuru. He wrote a song for me that was like inspired by my journey, my first trip to Okinawa. And Aww. he really wanted me to have, yeah, he really wanted me to have that song for me to perform in Okinawa and, you know, to share um, that song. So I was able to share his song, you know, on the Okinawan radio stations. And just, it was, I'm just super fortunate to have him as a sensei yeah. and to be part of that song. Tell us a little bit about this photo here. Again, I think it's a similar situation <laughs> that Travis was in, right? Where we see you. Yeah, so we, mm -hmm, we took so we took our tests together. So I was a Shinjin show, the first level. Mm -hmm. So this was the second time um, I went to Okinawa. It was for Udizun Minyo Group. We had the opportunity, as Travis mentioned, to perform with um, Kiko Miyagi Sensei's group, Udui Haru. Um, so this is me very, very nervous. This is the most nerve wracking experience of my life. My like oh, hands man. started to cramp up and I was like oh. super nervous. So I tried to, so I tried to mask it through my voice. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah. And that was when I had blonde hair too. So everyone was just ca calling say. me golden kampu. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so this was after Keizu. This is after Keizu. Mm -hmm. So how old were you when you want Keizu? Keizu, I was 15. Wow. So I actually, I think I actually, yeah, made 15. And then my, uh, it was actually funny because my number was um, contestant number 15 and I just made 15. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, yeah, so that's why I always remember how old I was. Well, very, very cool. Thank you so much for sharing all of this yeah. with us. I think it's, it's you know, it's wonderful for us to see. Like I said, I know sometimes you may not feel young anymore, but you definitely are part of our, <laughs> our, our young um, community here. And so we're going to... Um, we're gonna bring Shelby right back on because I know the next song that we're gonna introduce, um, a lot of people actually request it from you guys, yeah? It's the um, Nada Soso and Kanohona Pili Kai um, combination. So tell us a little bit about the background story on, on this and um, you know, it's, it's a crowd favorite for sure, yeah? Yeah, um, well, I've definitely always loved Nada Soso and I didn't know that, you know, um, actually that was Konohono Kai was, you know, made from and inspired from Nara So So. And, you know, Ichiro Sensei, he was really great in the sense that, you know, he really recognized the passions that we had outside of Sanshin. And, you know, this song is special to us because um, it really lets the four of us contribute something to the song that we feel really mm -hmm. passionate from, from our lives. So, like, you're going to see, like, Travis with his Sanshin, mm -hmm. Kaino with his guitar, Chantal is singing, I'm dancing the hula. And it was something, this number is really special to us because it really showcases, you know, who we are as well and mm -hmm. uh, something that we could do and kind of just kind of, kind of bond in the music, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. Eye contact with each other. Like, you, I, there's something about this medley that really, really mm -hmm. is For sure. Yeah. It's like, always meaningful every time we perform this song. It is. Yeah, I've had people call me specifically asking, okay, who was the group that did the, the hula mm. and the, uh, the young people? I want, I want that. Yeah. The <laughs> whole like, ensemble. Is it, is it yeah. Um, but they, you know, it's just like you said, um, 
it's such a great example of bringing together all these different parts that you guys each have. So this is one of my favorite songs that you guys do, so for sure. So we want to introduce the Nada Soso and Kanohono Pilikai.
Wow, such such nice harmony. Oh yeah. man, that is just so sweet. I think that is somebody that is so many people's favorite song, and I I love the way you guys do it together. Kind of like how Chantel said, everyone brings something really um, mm. meaningful to that song. So, oh man, that's that's I I don't know how many people have told me. Yeah, so <laughs> I know um, for you, Akael specifically, you know, this has been. Um, you know, it's been a tough year, right? I think without uh, your dad. And I think for many of us, it was such a shock to hear when we, he had passed. Um, but there's so many people and, and there, many people have said it tonight. They're, everyone's so proud of the work you guys are doing to, to carry it on. So thank you again. Yeah, thank, no, thank you guys for having us and letting us have this time to do a few songs for you guys and really kind of give us a background and a background of all of us and mm -hmm. the journeys that we have been through together as a group and with Ichiro Sensei. Yeah. So, so Kyle, tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, what you do, and um, all the many the many talents you have too, as well. <laughs> so I mainly uh, I'm an audio engineer. So I would usually mix uh, bands, uh, local mm -hmm. bands. So I have some experience with bands such as J Bug, uh, mm. The Vitals, Rebel Sojas. So those are all really nice guys in the Hawaii reggae music scene that yeah. have helped me out in another way to incorporate that into the Okinawan side as also yeah. as providing sound. So mm -hmm. that's um, that's just a little bit about me. And playing music would be, I started playing ukulele actually first. That's right. Before yeah, I remember Sanchi. you saying that. Yeah, so, because I think my dad always kind of hinted and noticed that I would rather play ukulele than Sanchin. Yeah. And he was completely fine with that because he sure. had always wanted us to do something that we enjoyed and right. to have all of us, uh, me, Travis Shelby and Chantel, all kind of bringing all that together to form uh, and to perform as Urizun Group was really special and something mm -hmm. that we've all cherished um, the memories with performing with Ichiro Sensei. That's, yeah. Um... So like we saw you playing guitar too, right? And the other yeah. acoustic, yes, um, many, many man of many talents. And so for those of you who don't know too, Kael, as a sound engineer, he um, he helped us a lot with our, our recording of a lot of the groups that we're doing for our virtual Okinawa festival. You should have seen, he brought a whole van, <laughs> a whole car worth of equipment. And so uh, thank you very much for your professional you know, expertise and and sharing that with us. It's definitely you know this year is the one of the years that we um, we're leaning on people like you to 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 help with all of this new um, the new world that we're in with this virtual planning. So twenty twenty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and so tell us a little bit about this picture right here. I think. Yeah. yeah so this picture is actually outside of Okinawa Center and. Takakura it was Garden, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. the guarding. And it's actually for an event that we did with the Young, young Okinawans of Hawaii. Uh, mm -hmm. They always have their senior luncheon. And Ichiro Sensei was always a proponent of playing for the generations before us and always mm -hmm. remembering um, things that they have said. And, you know, we can learn from them and always just pass on their knowledge from generation to generation. Like we would pass on something from Ichiro Sensei to um, the Urizun kids. Mm -hmm. uh, which is act they are actually younger than us so there's all next gen next yes, gen next of gen. Losing, yes, losing kids exactly. yeah mm -hmm. that's awesome nice nice outfits i mean I, I i like um you guys always have great outfits i think that's part of the the you know it makes you guys look really as a group right so i think it's another great one um and you know, you mentioned the Udis and Kids. Sorry, I, I, I introduced you guys as the Udis and Kids. But um, as we get older, right, I mean, I think it's really neat for us to see the next generation, like how we mentioned, mm -hmm. of, of the kids coming up and, and feeling this obligation, too, that we need to make sure that they have a similar, if not better, experience than we did, right, of, um, of feeling the passion and the music and the, you know, arts and stuff like that. So I can totally see you guys doing this, you know, same thing. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to bring Chantel back real quick because I think the next song is another really special song, of course, that um, you guys are famous for, right? Uh, and that uh, their Ichiro Shiromo Sensei actually wrote. So tell us a little bit about this song. Thanks, so, Kael, you want to start? Mm -hmm. 
uh, like how uh, Chantel had mentioned earlier, uh, Ichiro Sensei had wrote this song for Chantel uh, when she was going up to Okinawa uh, for the first time. And this song is really special uh, for all of us because um, as Ichiro Sensei has passed, this is something that he left behind as a mm -hmm. song that we can always remember him by and remember what all of our ancestors have taught us. And so this, act, so this video that we're going to play is actually from uh, the Shimu Utobash done by Ukwashin Kaburan mm -hmm. uh, with uh, Norman Kaneshiro Sensei and Eric Sensei, which uh, Shelby had alluded to that uh, she actually learned from Norman Sensei before mm -hmm. Joe Sensei. And Norman actually helped me develop into an audio engineer also. So this mm -hmm. was a, a real fun uh, event. And also on this video, we have uh, Brandon Ng, who was a guest on Yuntaku Live. Also, he was playing bass. And I think that's one thing Ichiro Sensei was always a real proponent of, uh, was just mm -hmm. letting people come up and just play Okinawa music. You know, because at the end of the day, as long as we're having fun and playing music that we love, you can't, you can't beat that. And you just want to be happy and play music. So I think that's a real fun thing that we all did this uh, together with Brandon and Ukwan Shin Kabudan. And this video is really, really special to me because there's something in the video that I've never experienced happening uh, to me before. <laughs> and I'll let you guys kind of watch that. And it's really special. So. Okay, so for our final song tonight, Uchinanju no Chimugukuru.
I saw people crying in that video. I almost got, oh, uh, teary-eyed myself. But, oh, uh, so that was Uchinanshi no Chimugukuru. Um, and yeah, he, I, I just, I can feel, you know, especially during Obon right now, I think it was, um, it's especially touching to have you guys on, you know, being that we are, you know, and honoring the ones who have passed before us. And it's just so special. So thank you guys so much for sharing sharing oh, him sure. with us and sharing with everyone yeah i'm sure he's he's yeah. looking down upon you guys and and here with us this week <laughs> so um again yeah thanks for you guys coming on and sharing your lives with all of us yeah so we um so i got you know a message i remember so, so you guys have played at so many different you know wonderful venues for okinawan community and, and dave arkawa reminded me that um you guys also got to play at the 2011 APEC. So you guys must yes. have been like, what, mm. high school? <laughs> yeah, so I was uh, out of high school and Shelby I was out of high school. Travis and Chantel were actually still in high school when we did that show for APEC. So. What an honor. So what I, I was told was that you you guys got the prime minister of Japan to actually do kachashi. That's what I <laughs> yeah. heard. I heard. You know? <laughs> so, oh, that was wonderful. So th good job, guys. I mean, thank you so much. Um, and, and, you know, Kaeo continues to help the community. He helps uh, HUA with uh, sound all the time, even with virtual canal festival. Yeah. So again, Kaeo, Telling you know, you're... the whole van of stuff he brought. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, <laughs> you know, and your dad was all about perfect sound and you know no feedback, <laughs> and it's really yeah. neat uh, and and really special to see you carrying even that on. Uh, you know. Uh, Truly, uh, it's you're really just following in his footsteps. It's really cool. Yeah, and I think uh, Ichiro Sensei always kind of um, re reiterated to us and always kind of uh, told us to always remember uh, the people who have done this before you and always just remember what they have taught you and mm -hmm. things that you can learn, good and bad. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and I think it's really important even for the four of us here even that we that we still do it but we also have to um open up to another younger generation let, and let them yep. also continue on this legacy that ichiro sensei and even for all of okinawa music just to have a younger generation do it it's really nice in hawaii yes yeah. well thank you guys so much for for joining us tonight um just a wonderful way for us, I think, to lead into our virtual Okinawan festival. Of course, mm -hmm. we'll also be featuring you. Um, I don't have the lineup memorized yet, <laughs> but um, I think uh, we're definitely going to have videos of you guys yeah. on our um, lineup. And I, I think, do we have them on Sunday? Because we normally have, we try to kind of keep to the regular Okinawan festival um, somewhat to the, the schedule that we normally have. Right, so. and we Zoom often used to close. Uh, close the on Sunday, right? So I think that's, yeah. that's probably about where we put you guys yeah, in the schedule. So we're looking forward to it. Thank you again for everything you guys do for our community, keeping us together and inspiring. You know, I think our, it's yeah. our job right now to inspire the ones that are younger than us, right? To, mm -hmm. to um, if not join in, start singing, you know, or, or doing whatever it is that you do. Um, and, and carrying on the tradition. So all the young ones out there, like, you know, it's the ones who are like seventh, eighth grade, right yeah. around that age, Shelby students. Shelby, <laughs> <laughs> um, your students may have been watching tonight. You never yeah. Know. They're going to be like, Miss, what was that? Miss, what was that? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, it really is, I think all of us, uh, you know, feel that, that, that duty to carry it on, so. Thank you again. So join us for a virtual Okinawan festival coming up this yes. weekend. It's here. September. It's here. It's here already. It's September. I can't believe it. But um, we're, this is going to be a big week for us. So uh, we'll see you then. And Thank you.